Learning a new sport can be daunting and swimming is no exception. We're taking things back to basics with our beginner swim series, starting with water confidence. In today's video, we look at the kit you need, starting out and getting confident in the water, including putting your face in the water, progressing to taking your feet off the floor and even letting go of the side completely. And by the end of this video, you'll be confident in how the water can support you and even an introduction into how you can move forward through the water. In this series, we're gonna take things really slowly as part of a step-by-step -step guide. As you move through the guide, feel free to go back to the previous steps and make sure you mastered them before moving on to the next one. The idea is to build your confidence and comfort in the water step-by-step. -step. Now, I'm gonna presume that you're starting right at the beginning, and so, before you even go to the pool, there's a few essential bits of kit you need. So let's go through those. A swimsuit or swim shorts are the absolute bare minimum. You can wear anything that you're comfortable with, but try go as tight fitting as possible without any loose or baggy clothing. Note that lots of pools will also make a cap compulsory, irrelevant of the length of your hair. On top of that, we would definitely recommend a pair of goggles. They don't need to be anything special or expensive, just a clear lens with a fit that prevents any water leaking in. A lot of pools also have swim aids that are available to the public, but something like a pool noodle can be very helpful to help with the confidence. I'll explain how to use it when we get to that point. Try and find a quieter time to head to the pool and preferably a pool with a shallow end or even better, a beginner's pool like this one we have here today so that you can work through these points that we're going through in this video. If it is a public pool and there's a lifeguard on duty, let them know that you're a beginner and what you're going to be doing. Right, let's get into the pool. Slide into the pool and hold onto the side and put your feet on the floor. Bob up and down slightly so that your shoulders go under the water and back up again. This is all about familiarization with the water, feeling the buoyancy and the viscosity, how your body moves through it. If there's space, have a walk around the pool. Use your arms and hands to help you move and just enjoy that feeling of being lighter. When you're ready, experiment with placing your face in the water. Keep your feet on the ground, hold on to the side if that helps. Start with a short time and then gradually keep your face in a bit longer, bringing your face out when you need to breathe. And so at this point we should mention your goggles. If you're comfortable putting your face in the water without goggles, that's great. But most people are a lot more comfortable putting their face in the water if they have their goggles on. So now's the time to pop them on. Once you're used to having your face in the water, play around with the breathing out rather than just holding your breath. Try to keep a consistent trickle of bubbles coming out of your mouth. And once your lungs are empty, lift your head and inhale. You might find it more relaxing to breathe out through your nose and mouth or even just your nose. The controlled exhale will help you relax. Quick mention of another piece of kit we haven't mentioned, and that is a nose clip. If you're not so comfortable with water going up your nose and you aren't confident breathing out through your nose underwater, then you can try using a nose clip. Now you know you're comfortable with your face in the water, it's time to progress to allowing your whole body to go beneath the surface. Simply bend your knees and constantly breathe out those bubbles as you sink into a squat at the bottom of the pool. Repeat this several times. Now this has all been under complete control and now we're gonna take the next step and take our feet off the ground and let go of the side of the pool. Remember, you are in very shallow water, so if you ever feel uncomfortable, just stand up. Take a deep breath and pull your knees up to your chest. Tuck your head in and make yourself into a ball. Again, gradually let the air out of your lungs. You should feel yourself start on the surface and then slowly sink down. These are known as sink downs. We have covered a lot already, so if that's enough for you for day one, that's okay. We have covered a lot and it's worth getting this right before rushing ahead to the next steps. If you are ready for the next step, the next step is to try floating and allowing the water to hold your body. Now you may already have experienced a bit of the sensation when you're doing your sink downs. With a lung full of air, most people will float. I say most people because everyone's buoyancy is slightly different. In fact, women are generally going to float significantly better than men. 
If you didn't experience that floating effect when you're doing your sink downs, go back to that step, take a much deeper breath, hold it for a little bit longer, and feel yourself float up before breathing that out and feeling yourself sink back down. Now let's move away from the mushroom float, as that's not actually a position you require for swimming. Instead, you want to try to be as horizontal as possible. For this, it's a good idea to make your body as large as possible, and so a star shape works quite well. Spread your arms and legs wide, and then gently tip yourself into the water in front of you with a big breath of air. Gently push off the floor with your feet to get them as close to the surface as possible. Look towards the bottom of the pool to help your head stay low enough. When your lungs start wanting air, breathe out and return to the surface. Once you're happy with your face down, try it on your back. This might seem an easier option, but you'll probably find it harder to get your legs to float. This is usually because your head is too high, so try look at the ceiling just behind you and push your hips upwards. It can take some practice, but with a full lung full of air, you should be able to relax here. If you can find that position, try experimenting with breathing in and out and see if you can feel your body sink and rise gently. If no matter how much you relax and breathe, you still can't get your hips to float or your legs to float, then maybe time to try the pool noodle. Just place it somewhere that needs a little bit of additional flotation, like under your hips or under your knees, and allow yourself to really relax in that position. You will obviously have to get rid of this later on as you get more confident in the water, but it's a great way to start and get relaxed in the water. Before we go, I want to add one final progression. We will revisit this in our next beginner video, but it's a good start now that you're comfortable being horizontal in the water to feel yourself moving forward in the water. Stand with your back to the wall, do a partial sink down and place your feet on the wall. Hold your hands out in front of you, this time together in a horizontal plane. Look forwards and down and then push your feet against the wall to move yourself forwards onto the surface. Try to keep your head in and keep it down and help get your hips up. And this will probably take a few attempts to get the right body angle and the right pressure with your legs as you push off the wall. Now you don't need to travel far, but it's a good introduction into the feeling as you propel yourself through the water in the propulsion phase of swimming that's going to come next. We're going to leave it there for this video, but please revisit any of the steps that you did today, especially the ones you found tricky. Getting them right now will set the basis for your swim stroke later on, so it's worthwhile getting them 100% correct before you click on the next video in our series. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the series.